Hey, 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 it's Kevin uh, from Queens, New York. I'm here in Forest Hills, New York. At home, it's my day off, so I'm not at the office. Uh, at the hat shop, I'm just here. Uh, I got my guitars and stuff, and you know, I figured maybe we'd jam a little and uh, talk about hats, maybe talk about guitars. Um, there's there are a lot of similarities I've been finding. You know, there's this. Uh, this gimmick that it's, I guess, a trend that's been popular in the last, I'm gonna say, 10 years in uh, guitar builders, guitar buying, called relicking. I'm sure you've heard of it if you're a you know, guitar player, musician. Um, when people relic something, it's when they artificially age it. So it's like, instead of this brand new Telecaster like this, it's all scuffed up and paint is missing from here, you know, they sand it and they actually freeze the body in like really cold, uh, you know, I, I don't know, freezer or something, nitrogen, and then they make it crack, you know, the way old paint gets these, uh, they call it weather checking, these natural cracks. I think it's actually beautiful, it's like a patina, but, you know, I like when it's natural, not artificially done. Anyway, they do all this stuff called relicking to the guitar, make it look like you've owned it since 1959, and it tells a story, and you're this, you know, like, cool old guitar playing bluesy dude, you know, and you, you just like, yeah, I've got the blues, my guitar's old, so I must be cool. Now, um, it's a thing, you know, some people do like the feel of old guitars and stuff that's worn out, you know, like a, uh, a worn out pair of jeans, a worn out hat, a worn out leather jacket, it does feel good, okay. So yeah, getting back to that now, there's also a trend now of relicking hats. People put artificial sweat stains around the, you know, the, the bands here. And they mush them up and, uh, you know, they make them dirty, extra soft. They pinch it like you've been pinching it for a million years and stick a match tip in there or a playing card or glue a rabbit's foot. And they make it look like a little burn. Sometimes they actually burn it with a torch. I've seen people taking stitches, kind of like uh, rawhide or uh, just some kind of junky old uh, embroidery thread. And they make little X stitches, kind of like Frankenstein, you know, sloppy stitch. All that stuff to make the hat look old, you know. And then you charge a lot more for it because, you know, the master aging techniques were applied, you know, or whatever. So, okay. Well, there, there are similarities in guitars and um, in hats. This is like a trend that I've seen in both industries. Um, and uh, people seem to not want to wait like, you know, uh, a month for their hat to get worn out. It's real easy to do this one afternoon. Just squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. You know, beat it up against the brick wall or whatever. I mean, you can make your hat look old yourself really easily. I don't know. Maybe you don't have the time to do it, or you're not artistic or something. But um, I, I like to buy my hats new and stuff. And, um, you know, I'm not buying old guitars because they're old and beat up. I buy them because they're good guitars. You know, they just happen to be old, too. So whether it's got scratches on it or in good condition, that doesn't matter. I actually like it to look new. You know, when I buy a 1971 Gibson, like the one in my last video, I want it to be nice. I don't want scratches. But whatever. You know, I'm not judging anybody. Everybody's got different opinions. I'm, I'm basically talking about the similarities and stuff. Now, um, this is this is a new guitar here. It's uh, it's meant to look like an old uh, classic. Like I think in 1972, Fender made these thin line Telecasters. They're Telecasters with these F holes, so they're basically hollow. I think there's a piece of wood that goes down the center here. Gives it some, you know, less hollowness. I'm pretty sure right down there is solid. So yeah, that's called a, a thin line Telecaster. Um, basically, you know, the Telecaster is known for being like a sort of a country guitar. A lot of country people, you know, if you go to country western artists, they all have Telecasters because it has a twang. Uh, yeah, let me twang it for you. Keith Richards, 
he uses it. It's kind of low tech. Low tech, see the bridge has only three little barrels. Instead of each little uh, string being adjustable heights, put it on three old time looking barrel things there, which is definitely not efficient. I think part of the reason why these sound cool, why Keith Richards likes them, you know, these kind of cool, sleazy, because of those inefficiencies. It doesn't stay in tune perfectly. Maybe we can't even hear those uh, imperfections, but we know it sounds good. So, Telecasters, you don't have to twang them. Now, you don't have to twang them. They have a lot of facets, um, just like hats. Dress hat like this. This is a dress hat. Now, one typical application for the dress hat is brim down just like that. That's the way the typical gentleman or, I don't know, uh, typical, you know, you see like an old fella in the street wearing his little old hat, you know. That's how guys tend to present this hat. Just like, uh, you know, your telly is not only twangy. You could uh, turn up the volume, add a little distortion maybe, and it has a totally different vibe to it. This is for like you know modern rock. So, um, doesn't have to twang, it can rock. Turn the distortion off and I put on a sweeter neck pickup sound, you know? To play jazz, it's actually a beautiful sounding instrument. It twangs, does the sweet, jazzy thing. Now I believe your hat has all those facets to it also, just like the Telecaster does. Let me show you what I mean. Okay. Now, typical application for, for this hat on my head is, um, yeah, like we showed you this here. All right, now, let's say you're a musician, and you want to take it to the club, and you're playing guitar tonight, and your alter ego is kind of like that, not that suit-wearing guy, but that cool dude. You flip your brim up, and give it a little more pinch, and it looks like something a little more vintage, or, I don't know, edgy rock and roll, brim down, get rid of that funky pinch. That's a more conservative business hat or something. Now, um, what else could I do to it? Let's say I want to uh, present this in another way. I could take the brim down, down to the back. It's kind of like what they call the weekender look. I'm not crazy about it, but a lot of people love. Flip it back up. Let's turn it into a pork pie. You guys know how to do this. Open it up. Make everything here the same width as there, just about. So in other words, everything the same height all the way around. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Pork pie. Trace. All right. Pork pie hat is even more edgy. You can take your hat, shape it like this. If it's, it's an old, soft, uh, worn fedora and it's soft like this, you can do these shapes. If it's new and crispy and brand new, you probably don't want to, you know. 
bend it and do all these kind of things. Maybe maybe the teardrop, that's one. You could do a center crease to a teardrop pretty neat because it's it's not evasive, invasive. Like here's the center crease, the teardrop is kind of like that, you know. Um, it's not a big change. Or what you can do is put your head inside and just bring the back down like that. Let's see if I can demonstrate that. All right, center crease. Teardrop. It's, you know, once people, I guess, in the hat business can do that, you know, you're wearing a hat, center crease, you can teardrop it on your head easily. You pop it out, you start again. Okay, as long as you don't steam it, it's not stained. All right, maybe I'll wear this short brim hat, this Antonio. It used to be a favorite of mine. But that's actually when I had short hair, I used to wear it a lot. Um, now that I have long hair, and my hair kind of sticks out of the sides and stuff, you know, like, kind of sticks out like that. You know? I don't wear a lot of short brown hats, like two inches. I generally stick with more of like my two and a half and threes. This is a three, Verdi. Actually, I gave this to my wife. Did I give it to her or did she just kind of take it? I think, yeah, it looked really good on her, so just wound up. This is a forest green silk beaver texture. Italian uh, hat. Okay. All right. Um, this hat also has many different facets, uh, like the Telecaster, you know. You turn it all the way down, like this. It's kind of a cool floppy hat. You bring it all the way up. Definitely a little bit more modern. Um, front down. Fedora look. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm actually liking this hat. I'm gonna start digging this one out more, I think. Forest Green. So, what's the lesson? Uh, like, like a cool guitar, your hat has many different ways to be presented. Um, don't present it just one way. Um, you know, there are there's maybe two, three, four, you've got your sporty way, your dressy way, your cool rock star way, your business-like way. You want to do trace the front there and do something cool with the front. Uh, you want to do a different angle. The side angle is always very kind of, you know, kind of cool, like that hustler look. The back angle like this is very 80s. It kind of frames your face with like a halo. A lot of girls do this. It's really kind of very 80s breakfast club, Boy George, Madonna-ish. That is a very cool way to wear a hat. It's not my thing, but again, it's cool. I've seen a lot of people do it with super brims, little tiny brims and little curls kind of hanging down. Back, yeah, that's super 80s. Um, also, the back of your head is just, it's like the tip of your head back there, so you have to go smaller in size if you're doing that. But generally, I wear it more parallel to the floor, and then I give it a side tilt like that. That's like my, my kind of thing. Um, See you next time.